All right, sorry for the clickbait title and the little bit of a meme intro there. Some people had been commenting on that beat video and saying that it was fake. So I think that that's pretty funny because it would be a pretty hard to like fake that. Like, why would I play in something like exactly how it is and fake it? but not actually record it. Like if I can actually play it, what like, and I just wanted to take the opportunity, a little bit of a lesson, like you should scrutinize everything across the internet, of course. But if you don't know for sure, like if you don't have the actual technical knowledge to understand what you're saying, like most of the people who are saying that do not like actually have the experience or the technical knowledge to make that call to say like, oh yeah, that's fake, obviously because they were completely wrong. Just ask questions. Like you don't have to start from the point of calling something out or making an accusation that you don't know to actually be true for a 100% sure so just like ask questions and that's what a lot of people in the comments did um, politely asking about my process making the videos um, like asking about why they couldn't see the lights all that good stuff but always always ask questions you never want to get caught up making accusations that are just false but what's special about this beat video is I put it out in August and it did like pretty average for like its first couple months as like a beat video on my channel but then something happened and it just like spiked up and it got a ton of views and people seem to really dig this beat that I just made in my bedroom one day and I figure since a lot of people actually got an Akai and became mini recently for the holidays or I think people are just picking this up all the time because it's a great controller I'd walk you through how I made this beat so you could go ahead and do it for yourself it's actually really simple. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you how I made that lo-fi beat with my Kai and BK Mini, Ableton Live, which is my DAW, and some samples. Let's get into it. Okay, so for full disclosure, I was collaborating with a company called ADSR that uh, puts out sample packs on their store, and I was making beats each week to demonstrate one of their sample packs that was on sale for them. So that is how I got this pack, which is called the Black Octopus Sound Reel-to-Reel -reel Vintage Lo-Fi Pack. I created that video for them, and put it on my channel as well, but they're not sponsoring this tutorial or anything. This is just happens to be the pack that I'm using today. I found that this is a really great lo-fi sample pack, cool instrumental loops. I was obviously really drawn to some of those guitar loops and I knew I wanted to make a lo-fi beat and a lot of lo-fi beats start with guitar, of course. So, when I work with samples and this actual project is entirely sample based, there's no plugins um, at use here. I use them a couple ways. The first way I'll show you is by taking loops like these, like chord loops, and then putting them into a traditional drum rack where you would normally put like a kick and a snare or something like that. But here, as you can see, we have a few different guitar chords. Probably already starts to sound familiar. been a while since I've played this. But you get the gist of that there. So we've got those strummed out chords. And then we've got these kind of single notes that help me lead into the different chords, right? And to set that up, that's as simple as creating a new MIDI track. So I'll hit Command Shift T. Can also go to create insert MIDI track and then I've got my MIDI track there I can go to drums drum rack which will give us an empty drum rack and then within the drum rack we go back to our sample pack we grab the sample that we want to go on a pad let's put that right on C1 and now that is a hot sample then you can start to have some fun And some samples sound better together than others. Something that I have to do a lot is transpose samples to get them to work. So these two samples here actually sound pretty good together. This last one does not sound too good. So if I use this transpose knob here, That sounds a lot better and I just kind of turned the transpose knob until it sounded right in my ears. And you could start making your own uh, track right from there. You can warp the samples which will keep them in time. If you use the tones warp mode on some more melodic or harmonic samples it sounds a bit better. 
I also recommend using Complex Pro. And that was my process for loading these samples up. But there's one more step that I want to demonstrate actually, which is choke groups. Because you notice when I play these two chords, or any of these, they don't bleed over each other. However, that little kit that I just made on the fly here, you can hear all the samples bleeding over each other. So there's a little bit of noise on the samples because they're lo-fi samples, uh, but there's also the tones that are hanging over each other, which can sound a little messy. Uh, we want to put them all in the same choke group to avoid that. So we're going to open up this little hidden menu here, and then we're going to press I.O. And you'll notice that each sample is listed here, and they each have a choke group. Currently, they're assigned to none, but if we assign them all to the same number, they will now not bleed over each other, and they will cut each other off. So that's one major way I work with samples, and that's how this track started, with some guitar chords put into a drum rack and all assigned to a choke group. Let's jump over to arrangement view where the track is arranged and we can see the initial pattern here, our guitar chords, and then we see the drums come in next. So let's take a look at the drums. This is fairly straightforward. So yep, pretty straightforward. All we have to do here is go through our sample pack find the drum one shots. So drum one shots and drum loops, two different things. One shots are like single hits, like a single kick or a single snare. And then loops are obviously loops. I'll never usually put a loop into a drum rack unless say I really wanted that initial kick out of a loop. I could grab it, put it in the drum rack, but then I would need to shorten it and just get that kick. And then I could also take this hit, but I'd have to make sure I'm shortening these start and end points here so that they make sense and I'm only getting what I want. But most packs have one shots, so you don't have to do all that. So for this particular drum kit, it's very simple. I've got a kick, a snare, and then two hi-hats to bounce off of. For the finger drumming, it's fairly simple if you slow it down. One, two, and one. Two. Then I put my right hand on autopilot. I have a very easy beginner finger drumming tutorial that I'll put at the top of the screen that you can go watch if you want to kind of get started doing that. And the drums are pretty consistent and they pretty much loop like that for the rest of the track. I know people were curious about the bass line and that's what comes in next here. A lot of people asking what plugin is the bass? And like I said at the beginning, it's not a plugin at all. It's just a sample, a one shot sample. We see that word again because one shot doesn't just have to mean like a drum hit. It can also mean a single hit of an instrument. And what we can do when a pack gives us like instrumental one shots, for instance, like this pack does with bass one shots, hear all those single notes tells us the root note as well. What we can do with these instrumental one shots is again, let's create a new MIDI track. I'll use the uh, create insert MIDI track this time. And a lot of DAWs, even if you're not using Ableton Live specifically, have some type of sampler. And Live actually has a very simple sampler to use called Simpler. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab Simpler here. And you can see it's got a box for us to drop the sample here, which we can do. Go back to sample and let's find a really easy bass note and just drop it in here. Now, since this is a MIDI track, I can play it.
boom. And then we've got a bass that we can fully play, no plugins required, just a little simpler. One thing you might notice is that uh, I have to hold down the note for it to continue playing through the sample. If I play it short, it just ends up being very short. If we want to change that and we want it to play through more of the note, we can of course turn the release up. Something I do if there's a little annoying click at the beginning of a sample as well is just turn the attack up slightly. Um, you can turn it up a lot to get a more drastic effect and change the actual attack of the instrument. Get more of a fade in sound there, right? But for a bass line, we don't want that. We just want a nice playable bass like that. Not much else going on there for the bass. Just a simple one shot dropped into simpler and played along with the track. Next up, we have a flute sample. Let's see if I actually remember how I played this. C sharp. There it is. Okay, so here we're actually going to run into something that's a little bit interesting when you're working with samples. Most samples, if they are tonal, they have a note name in them. So you'll notice even these bass one shots, they have A, B, C sharp, uh, C, D, E. That's really important. And if you notice on this flute sample I have here, it's got A in its title. Now, when we're sampling instruments, it can get a little bit confusing because when you drop it into the sampler and we play that C on our keyboard, let's actually put a tuner on here. And let me play this C on the keyboard. We should be hearing a C, we should be seeing a C, but we're not. We're seeing an A on the tuner because I did not transpose this sample. I just left it as an A. And what you really should do is, let's actually go to controls and the transpose. When you throw a sample into the simpler, the easiest thing to do is just to transpose it until we get to match our keyboard. So I want the C to be a C. Boom. That's the easiest way to work with samples this way. However, Sometimes I get a little lazy and I don't transpose my samples, but luckily I've got some music theory knowledge. So since this track is in the key of F sharp, uh, as our bass note dictates there, I can pretty much transpose in my head and play along with the flute because with that sample untransposed, if I play in the key of A, it'll sound good. But if you want to save yourself the trouble and you don't have that music theory knowledge, it's definitely easier just to transpose your samples from the jump. Everything else here is really simple because I'm just using the same exact techniques that we just talked about. We throw a single one shot note into a simpler, like for this keyboard here. And there you go, I played some chords on the keyboard. That's fairly simple. Same thing, I was lazy, I didn't transpose the sample, so I'm playing in all sorts of yeah, different keys with my hands, but we're hearing it all in the same key. Here's a glockenspiel. Same exact method as you can see here. There it is, cool. This next layer here, the vocal samples, is probably one of the most fun things that I implement in my productions. I really like to use vocal samples like this, and that is because they're not like a single note instrument where you just like play them as a scale. There's riffs and phrases, and they react differently depending on, you know, what the singer is actually singing or saying. So it looks like I use a sharp there. So again, I'm just, you know, transposing in my head, finding the notes that work. 
It's a little more challenging with vocal samples because they're not just a single note. They do have riffs sometimes. Sometimes there are vocal one shots that I also like to work with. You'll notice that everything has a basic audio processing rack on it, which I've made a video on as well. It basically just some compression, some basic EQ controls and some reverb that I put on almost every single track. Every track is also side chained to the kick. So let's actually focus in on that vocal sample so I can show you what that means. You can see this little signal happening and that's actually coming from the kick. And you can hear a bit of a pumping. And that's because everything is reacting to the kick. It'll be obvious on the guitar chords for sure. And if everything is ducking under our kick drum, it makes the mix all kind of like gel together. It also gives everything this like kind of unifying force kind of pumping through with the kick, which I enjoy in my music. The last sample I used here was a guitar one shot. Threw it in simpler. Again, you don't need fancy plugins for this stuff. If you get a good sample pack that has good one shots in it, it's not gonna sound like you know a real guitar. This is a lo-fi track, so I have the benefit of that. I can mix and mangle different samples. And it'll sound lo-fi, but it's a lo-fi track, so it's okay. But I have this guitar that's you know sampled from a real guitar, so it has that advantage. And those are all the layers of this beat. The last thing I'll talk about here is how do I actually put these videos together and how do they work? That's a good question because they're not performances and I'll let you know what I mean. So you can see that there's two scenes here. And it sounds fairly similar but it's not exactly the same as what was in the final product because what happens is I'll get a sample pack and I'll make a beat, no cameras rolling at all. And then when it's time to make the video, I've already got my musical ideas here. I already pretty much know what instruments I'm gonna use and what's gonna be playing. That's really helpful so I don't like go through like SD cards or like tons of footage and I don't have to film for so, so long. I've already got the ideas made. So then what I do is you see this second scene here, which are the actual loops that you hear in the track because I go to make the video and I remind myself, okay, what did I play? What pattern did I play with those chords? And I take a look back and listen to it. and I remind myself, great. And then I go ahead and I record into an empty clip slot with the camera rolling on that part. Okay, boom, I'm done recording the guitar. Then it's time to go to, okay, I'll start recording the drums. Remind myself what I recorded. Great, let me go record that with cameras rolling in an empty clip slot. Then I'm moving the camera around, I'm getting different angles. It's fairly obvious that it's not a performance because I would have to have like eight different cameras to even make it work. But some of my live sessions are performances and they're noted as such in the title always. So what that gives me is video footage of me actually playing what is going to be in the track. And then it gives me the freedom to now take these loops and arrange them into a song the way I see fit then I can just match up the video footage to when each different part comes in in the arrangement that I then built. So it's a pretty fun way to make beat videos without having to make some impossible looping performance stuff. Like not a lot of this stuff, it's, it's very hard to go from playing one thing and then jump right into the next thing, unless you've seen my work with some of the looping pedals and stuff. But that's a totally different kind of performance and a totally different kind of style. These videos are a way for me to showcase my beats as I intend them to be, not as performances specifically. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. I wanna thank you all for making that beat so popular. If you did enjoy it, I guess people want me to put it on like Spotify or stuff, but if that is what you want me to do, comment down below. It makes sure you are following me on Spotify anyway. Check out Control Free Club, which is my lifestyle and apparel brand for music producers, home studio music producers, artists, creatives, all that good stuff. Link is in the description. And if you found this helpful and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. This has been Tejo, your electronic music mentor. Have a good one.